Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello and uh, welcome to this uh, uh, lecture on neoplasia. In today's uh, lecture, we will talk about cancer epidemiology, uh, which means the study of cancer in populations, as well as a little bit about carcinogenesis, uh, mainly chemical and radiation carcinogenesis. Uh, what is carcinogenesis? Carcinogenesis is uh, the way cancer develops um, the genesis of cancer uh, when it occurs due to certain substances such as chemicals and due to exposure to radiation. Okay. So, why should we study cancer epidemiology? Now, it is very important to understand the epidemiology of cancer because this is this will give us a clue, clue to the etiology of many cancers and how a population as a whole is exposed to certain cancers, are um, more prone for certain cancers and why certain populations are not prone for certain cancers. So, it will help us enormously to understand uh, uh, how cancer develops and uh, why it is different in different populations, what are the different environmental factors that predispose to cancer and so on and so forth. So, it gives us clue to the etiology of many cancers and the glaring example of this is of course, cigarette smoking and tobacco which, which is linked to lung cancer and um, the, the second example is uh, the lack of dietary fibers, especially in the western societies which can lead to colon cancer. So, these are certain examples of how epidemiological studies have hel helped us understand cancers, the etiology of cancers better. Now, we will uh, look at the incidence of uh, cancer worldwide. In 2012, there were 14.1 million new cancer cases worldwide with nearly 8.2 million deaths. Now, this is the WHO data on cancer. Now, you can see that nearly 50 percent or more than 50 percent of uh, people who develop cancer die due to the disease. So, it is a very high mortality. The commonest cancer among men is lung uh, in the 2012 data and breast cancer in women. Now, the death rates have been decreasing in the developed world. This is because of many reasons. Um, these cancers are picked up early in those uh, parts of the world. Um, they have be better economic uh, conditions. Um, uh, they have different cancers. So, they have the death rates have been decreasing. Some cancers like th those of the cervix and stomach are, uh, are decreasing quite a bit in the developed world. Um, this is because as you know, uh, cervical cancer has uh, a screening uh, program in those uh, parts of the world and they are picked up very, very early and can be treated. Whereas, the same cannot be said about uh, countries like India, where still cancer mortality is very, very high. And um, it is uh, projected that by 2035, we will have nearly double these number of cancer cases or even more. So, what are the environmental factors that affect the development of cancer and how is it different from different countries? Now, it is seen that for some reason uh, uh, gastric cancers are much higher in Japan. This could be due to some of the uh, food habits that uh, that are prevalent in that country is a high consumption of salted food, high consumption of uh, smoked foods. So, that could be one of the reasons. 
Whereas, breast cancers uh, are very high in the USA and not so much in Japan. There could be features of diet that affect the development of cancer. For instance, obesity is known to predispose to many cancers. Smoking of course, even everyone knows that smoking uh, is a, a, a highly cancer causing uh, substance. So, you have uh, with smoking you have many kinds of cancers that can develop such as upper aerodigestive cancer, lung cancer, urinary bladder cancer and pancreatic cancer. Chewing of tobacco which is quite common in this part of the world can lead to oral cavity cancers and other upper aerodigestive cancers. Consumption of alcohol has been linked to oropharyngeal cancers, laryngeal cancers, esophageal cancer and even hepatocellular or liver cancer. Reproductive history has uh, a, play, uh, a role to play. You have uh, in people who have prolonged estrogen um, exposure, you have cancers of the breast and endometrium are common in these women. And finally, we even know, now know today that infectious agents such as certain viruses and bacteria can cause cancer. What is the relationship between age and cancer? Now, cancer in general is a disease of, uh, of, of an increasing age. So, the maximum number of cancers occur between the age group of 55 and 75. This does not mean that children do not suffer from cancer. Cancers are also known to occur in uh, children. There is uh, certain types of cancers that occur in uh, children, but they are far less common when compared to uh, cancers that occur in adults. Now, this is quite um, uh, understandable because as we, we will learn later, uh, the acquisition of mutations is what causes cancer and as a person ages, you can expect that more and more mutations could, occur, uh, to, could accumulate in the cells and that could lead to uh, cancerous growth. And of course, with age you also have a decline in immune function. So, as you know and as we will be discussing later, uh, uh, tumors also uh, are kept in under uh, control because of a good immunity and as with age, since the immune function uh, becomes less and less, these uh, patients are more prone to develop cancer. Certain predisposing conditions that are acquired can uh, lead to cancer. For instance, chronic inflammation uh, can lead to certain cancers such as those of the uh, mesothelial lining, what are known as mesotheliomas and lymphomas um, uh, can occur in people who have chronic inflammations. Um, immunodeficiency states, we already talked about uh, a lessening immune status can uh, lead to cancer. So, you can imagine cancers are more common in people who have immunodeficiencies such as people who suffer from HIV and so on. Certain precursor lesions can develop into cancer such as a chronic irritation causing squamous metaplasia of the, uh, of the respiratory tract. Now, this uh, could be due to smoking or whatever and that could eventually lead to dysplasia and finally, it could lead to cancer. Endometrial hyperplasia of the uh, lining of the uterus, the, uh, the endometrial lining can undergo hyperplasia, further on it can undergo dysplasia and further on it could lead to cancer. Leukoplakia or a white uh, uh, plaque in the uh, patch in the um, oral cavity. Uh, if it has dysplastic changes could lead on to cancer and villus adenoma of the colon is now known to be a predisposing condition that can lead to uh, colonic adenocarcinoma. Right. Um, there are also some genetic factors that are known to um, uh, predispose uh, to cancer. 
um, because this is something that um, that really uh, interests the lay person. Uh, my mother suffered from cancer, my aunt suffered from cancer, my sister suffered from cancer. Uh, so, am I prone to cancer? These are some of the questions that uh, doctors are constantly asked. And uh, we now know that there are inherited genes uh, that can predispose to cancer. And uh, but, however, it's not so. Uh, simple that if you inherit a gene, you will develop the cancer, because it is a very complex interplay between genetic and environment, environmental factors. Now, there are a whole lot of genes, if you uh, inherit, you could inherit uh, the cancer syndromes associated with those. Um, I will just name a few of the important ones, the RB gene leading to retinoblastoma, the p53 gene uh, leading to the Lee Fromeni syndrome and which causes various tumors, um, the APC gene uh, leading on to the FAP or familial adenomatous polyposis uh, core colon cancer and uh, so on. And you have uh, familiar familial cancer where there is familial clustering of cases, but role of inherited predisposition is not clear. So, this is these are some of the established um, cancer syndromes, but in many uh, other cancers common cancers such as those of breast and so on. While we know that some genes predisposed to cancer, but we also like the BRCA1 gene, the BRCA1 gene uh, or the BRCA1 gene, but we also know that many of the familial cases we we have still not narrowed upon the genes that could be ca causing those cancers. So, not everything is known about the genetic inheritance of uh, the common cancers. With this brief uh, uh, overview about um, uh, the genetics uh, behind cancer and the epidemiology of uh, cancer, we will then move on to some of the cancer causing agents or carcinogenic agents. Um, this is an important topic, because we now know that in the environment or in your the, in the course of one's life, one may be exposed to carcinogenic agents and this may predispose the individual to develop certain cancers. Now, we will be learning in our subsequent classes uh, that cancer um, uh, um, uh, can occur only when there is a genetic change within the cell and um, uh, therefore, the carcinogenic agents that we will be talking about primarily inflict genetic damage in the cells and that leads to the cancerous transformation of the cells. Now, there are three classes of carcinogenic agents. The first is chemical, uh, which is a uh, important cause for carcinogenesis. The second is radiation induced. And finally, the infective or the microbial causes. Now, in this uh, lecture, we will only be talking about chemical and radiation carcinogenesis. Uh, the microbe induced or the virus induced uh, cancers, we will deal with in a subsequent lecture. Right. I mean, 200 years ago, there was a London uh, uh, based surgeon called Sir Percival Pott who for the first time established that there could be an environmental link to the development of cancer. What he found was that uh, there was an increased incidence of uh, scrotal cancer among the chimney sweeps um, uh, and uh, this was probably and they, they introduced a legislation uh, against uh, you know this and uh, this activity and that really uh, uh, reduce the number of cases of uh, scrotal cancer. So, this one public health policy measure led to uh, an enormous um, uh, change in the incidence of scrotal cancer. So, that is the power of epidemiological studies and the uh, and, and to be able to see these associations. Now, why did these chimney sweeps develop uh, scrotal cancer? So, probably it was because of a carcinogenic agent they were being exposed to. And today we know that uh, that was a benzopyrene, 
uh, which which gets um, produced by the burning of coal. Now, before we go into that, um, uh, there is a way of classifying chemical carcinogens either as direct acting or indirect acting. This is based on uh, the fact that some of the chemical carcinogens uh, can directly cause a change in the, uh, the, the genetic nature of the cell and they do not need an additional agent to do that. Uh, these are known as direct acting chemical carcinogens. The most, uh, mm, the, the best example of this would be uh, the some of the alkylating agents that are used in the treatment of cancer. It is ironic that we use certain agents to treat cancer and because of the use of these agents, the, the individuals or the patients can later on develop a second cancer. And uh, because these are the alkylating drugs, uh, the drugs that are used in the uh, treatment of cancer could lead to genetic damage and the development of a further cancer in the latter years. So, these are direct acting carcinogenic agents. The indirect acting ones require a metabolic conversion to an ultimate carcinogen. So, the most potent of these are the polycyclic hydrocarbons. Uh, for example, the benzopyrenes, uh, which I already mentioned, um, which can cause lung cancer and also the scrotal cancer of the chimney sweeps that we talked about. Other examples are uh, aromatic amines and azo dyes, which are used in the rubber industry. Uh, they can cause urinary bladder cancer. Now, all these indirect acting chemical carcinogens have to be converted into an active agent by a P450 dependent mono oxygenase. Now, some individuals um, have better way of, uh, uh, we ha they have a more efficient way of converting these uh, uh, carcinogens, whereas certain others do not. So, that is a genetically acquired trait. The P50 dependent mono oxygenase is a genetically acquired uh, trait. So, according to what kind of uh, conversion you, you are capable of, different individuals have different rates of uh, developing these cancers, although they are exposed uniformly to the same chemical carcinogen. So, in other words, the exposure and the development of cancers is limited by the genetic ability to convert these uh, uh, carcinogenic agents by the P450 dependent mono oxygenase. Now, there is also uh, um, another substance called aflatoxin B1, which can uh, grow in improperly stored um, nuts and so on and this can cause hepatocellular cancer. Here is a list of all the agents that we know of which could cause uh, cancer either directly acting um, or uh, uh, such as the alkylating agents and the acylating agents and the ones that require uh, metabolic activations or the pro carcinogens, they are also known as the pro carcinogens which include the polycyclic uh, and um, aromatic hydrocarbons, the aromatic amines and natural plant products such as aflatoxin which I already mentioned. Now, how do these chemical carcinogens um, cause uh, uh, the development of cancer? As I already mentioned, they are mutagenic. That means, they cause a mutation in the gene and they contain a highly reactive electrophile group that combines with the DNA forming a DNA adduct. And this process of the chemical combining with the DNA of the cell and forming an adduct in, is known as the initiation phase of chemical carcinogenesis. Subsequently, these initiated cells expand and may uh, develop into the tumor due to other substances which are known as promoters. So, there are two phases in which chemical carcinogenesis occurs. The first is initiation and the second is promotion. So, this is a picture that um, shows the two processes. You have a carcinogen which gets metabolically activated and the, the active ingredient is the electrophilic intermediates 
and they bind to the DNA forming the adduct and it that forms a permanent DNA lesion or a mutation and if these cells undergo proliferation and uh, they form a pre-neoplastic clone which ultimately forms a malignant neoplasm and the first part of this process is known as initiation and the second part is known as the promotion. Now, normally um, we, uh, we during our lifetime all of us are exposed to a whole lot of carcinogens, but not all of us develop the these cancers. So, why is that? So, because normally the cell has a DNA repair mechanism, uh, which is constantly working and trying to repair all these DNA damages that could have been uh, occurring due to initiation processes. Uh, only when these DNA repair mechanisms are overwhelmed by a whole lot of chemical carcinogens does it fail and then you have permanent DNA lesions that are passed on to daughter cells forming ultimately the cancer cell. Now, uh, the next is radiation carcinogenesis. Radiation as we know is a very potent carcinogenic agent um, and we have examples from uh, natural disasters, from nuclear bombs such as uh, examples from the uh, Hiroshima Nagasaki uh, incident where uh, people developed a whole lot, the survivors developed a whole lot of cancers and they still do because of the permanent genetic damages that they have suffered due to the radiation, especially those of thyroid and other organs. And also the survivors of the Chernobyl uh, incident in Russia, they are also prone to develop a lot of uh, cancers. People who receive radiation therapy are also known to develop certain cancers. Again, a therapeutic agent here ironically becoming a carcinogenic agent. Uh, people who get radiation in the head and neck region for instance uh, are known to develop uh, carcinomas of the thyroid later on. So, this can lead to cancer. Now, how does radiation cause cancer? It causes cancer because it can cause double stranded DNA breaks, it can cause translocations and it can cause mutations in the cancer genes. Now, you have UV rays uh, in the sunlight which can cause various cancers and that, that is due to the formation of pyrimidine dimers within the DNA. So, in today's lecture, we discussed uh, something about the epidemiology of cancer, how cancer is common in certain, uh, certain cancers are common in certain uh, populations, certain others are not common in those populations, but certain um, and how environmental factors contribute to the development of uh, cancers. And we also talked about chemical carcinogenesis. Uh, how um, uh, alkylating agents and other agents cause cancers either as directly acting or after being converted into um, active substances. And finally, we also learnt a little bit about radiation induced carcinogenesis. Uh, the carcinogenesis that occurs due to infective agents, we will talk about it in a, uh, uh, in a later class because it is it's quite a uh, big topic in itself. And uh, we will also talk uh, about the, um, the genetic changes that occur in cancers in our uh, other uh, lecture classes. Thank you.